Yo, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be leveling up your compass skills for a third time. Uh, today we're going to be getting into some of the amazing mix-ins that Compass has for CSS3. While Compass has many, many mix-ins for CSS3, we're only going to be going over a couple, a couple of them, and I'm going to show you where on Compass's website you can use the documentation to learn all of the mix-ins that the CSS3 part of Compass has to offer. So what we're, we're going to do first is if you notice, I already have Compass watching. This is, I'm just going to assume at this point, you know how to have Compass watch your, your project. If not, go back and watch the second tutorial. So we're going to go to compass-style.org. And here, uh, we're going to go to the reference. Now, the Compass reference is a really great part of their website that you can spend a ton of time on. And there is lots and lots and lots of things to read here. So we're going to go to the CSS3 part of the Compass core here on the left. And if you notice, there's this thing that says this file can be imported using import compass slash CSS3. If you notice in our previous document, we already said compass, import compass. So we're importing all of compass. Um, if you just want to import compass CSS3, by all means, just use import compass slash CSS3. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check out border radius. So border radius, I mean, this works just like what you would expect it to work like. Uh, we had a, previously we had a mix-in that said uh, mix-in border radius and took the values and calculated the border radius. Uh, so this is basically the same thing. Um, let's go to our page here. Let's add a border radius to the main div. So this grad. So let's add a border radius to this. To do that, just like in SAS, you would do at include border radius and then in here inside of parentheses we're going to say well let's just say 20 pixels we're going to give this a border radius of 20 pixels and then semicolon save check our terminal it's overwritten everything fine we refresh the page and this now has a border radius of uh, 20 pixels if we go to our style.css actually um, yeah let's not save this let's go here um, style sheets style.css check that out so as you can see it's adding all of the vendor prefixes just like our previous mix in that we had made pretty awesome well let's say you wanted to add a border radius to only the top or the bottom or the left or the right well that's cool because compass has built-in functionality for that as well so as you can see you can sort of uh, just paw through these documents to, to find out exactly all the options that Compass has. So let's say we want to add a different radius for each corner. Let's just do 20 pixels, 5 pixels, 10 pixels, and then let's try 40 pixels. And we're going to hit save, and let's check out our project to see what happened. So we'll refresh this, and as you can see, it's gone down. It's 20, 5, 40, 10. So, uh, as you can see, these things are pretty robust. Uh, if you go through here, you can even do things like assigning uh, the horizontal radius and the vertical radius for each corner. So it can get pretty wild. Uh, they definitely didn't leave anything out in terms of being able to use this to your full advantage here. Let's do something like get rid of this gradient, this uh, WebKit gradient. This one's an interesting example because gradients are a little different. So we're gonna do, uh, the, this one is under images here. So under images, you'll notice that this has include background image URL, and then this linear gradient is inside of here. If we want to see exactly how this works, these things uh, have often have examples, and in the examples in the documentation, they'll show you exactly how to create various things. So if we just want to do a basic linear gradient, uh, just like you know something like this, we can come down here. And you can find one that is just a basic linear gradient. Let's make this a little bigger. So let's see here. Let's grab this one is a basic linear gradient, giving it two values. And what that's going to do is it's going to go from top, uh, top left to bottom right, or basically just top to bottom. And it's going to go white to light gray. So let's grab this. 
in our project here. We'll get rid of these. So we're gonna we went from cream to cream too. So we'll keep that going. Let's just delete this. And now we're gonna include a background image parenthesis linear gradient parenthesis, and then we'll do cream, and then cream two. We'll save that out, make sure Compass doesn't have any errors. Great. Refresh our page. And as you can see, there really isn't a ton of change because it worked correctly. If we go to our CSS, you'll see that it did add all of these gradient uh, vendor prefixes. Uh, so before, even though we made our mixins before, they're sitting at the top here, and now we don't even have to do that at all. Our CSS gets really clean, or should I say our SAS gets really clean. It gets a lot easier to navigate. Uh, basically, you just don't have all this clutter. And this is just the tip of the iceberg with Compass. If you go through these documentation uh, online here, you should be able to find a ton of great stuff in the CSS3. If you want to make sure you're using the right includes, the right mixins, uh, you know, I'm on here all the time just to, you know, see what, what other things we can do with this. So I would suggest just going through here and learning the mixins and then using them in your projects just like you would your normal CSS3 properties. Okay, well that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions or comments as always, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Level Up Tuts at Twitter. We should have a bunch more videos coming for you this week. Uh, once again, this is Scott and thanks for watching. Bye.